We've taken a look at how to describe uh, categorical data using uh, graphs, right? Bar graphs, bar charts, pie, uh, or pie graphs, Pareto charts, or to name a few. We take a few minutes to look at dot plots, histograms, and box plots, which you see here on the right side, describing quantitative data. Again, quantitative data is numerical values, right, that you get from a... Um, from a quantitative variable, right? How many siblings do you have? How much money do you make, right? Those are all variables or characteristics of individuals. Dot plots are our first form. You can go ahead and read what a dot plot is, but I'll show you what a dot plot is. Again, a dot plot helps us see a distribution. The distribution is all the possible values in our data. How often do they occur? Here's an example with some um, calculations on the side. You'll see a distribution uh, comparing California and Texas. Um, these are uh, 37 people um, surveyed in Texas, 28 in California. This happens to be high school students. Rating of the importance of reducing pollution, and then you can see some calculations, but you will see the dots. Important in the dots is that a dot represents an individual person, so you'll see 37 dots or 28 dots. And that helps us see the distribution, the frequency. We can see the frequency. And then you can do calculations whether you want relative frequencies, right? You can then do some calculations. You can say 8.1% of California students rate below 500. And there's your 500. There are three dots below 500 and so forth as you look at these calculations here. If we were in class, we would take a little bit of time to answer some of these questions. You can take a look at the answers, right? You should be able to answer questions about frequencies, right, from either one of those groups there, right? And so you can see that's where these calculations come from. But that's a dot plot. Compared to what we look at is a histogram. And again, that's another way to describe or analyze data, the distribution of a quantitative variable. A histogram often gets confused with a um, bar chart, but bar charts are for categor categorical variables or categories. So this is what a histogram looks like. It looks like this. It does look like a bar chart. It has class values, though, so um, or has classes or bins, right? And you have these widths, what we had talked about previously. So here's an example. You have a distribution of the number of hours spent playing video games. You decide how you want to group those values. Here you have a bin with a 5 from 0 to 499. Here are two other ways, right, to describe your classes or your bins, how many fit into that, and then you have your bars to represent the heights of each of those. And then we have a visual of the, we have a visual of your, um, your, um, distribution. Oftentimes there are no gaps in a histogram because we're talking about continuous values versus a bar graph which you have categories, right? The spaces don't mean anything. If there is a gap in between the values, that means there's no values inside of there. So something to keep in mind. Similarities and differences, again, take a quick uh, peek at that. Um, they both use bars. They measure frequency or relative frequency. They can and uh, quantitative versus categorical data. Now, we continue on specifically, and you want to be able to, as a good practice problem, I would say, can you answer these questions here, right, which are going to just kind of look at some of the specific details of histograms, class widths. And this is because we spend a lot of time um, using histograms to describe our data. We can determine... Um, the frequency or sample size from the heights of the bars, right? And so that's something to keep in mind as we um, look at here, right? There are 25 here. And that's what we're referencing in this conversation in the notes here as we look at um, these values here where they come up from. Now, we have these other kind of, like I said, um, of situations where we have to distinguish, okay, if I get some new value, where would these values play, right? Where would they fall on these boundary points? 
and this is boundaries for each class of a histogram, right? Those are these class widths. But what happens, right? What does 55 to 60 mean? These five really mean from 55 to 59 or up to 60. And this is a graph of life expectancy, which is, again, on average, how long do people expect to live? Um, and this is in countries. And you'll see an interesting story. There are some countries where fires five countries where people the average age that they live to is between 55 and 59 they're 25 from 60 to 65 the united states is one of these that's in between 75 and 80 but there's still a lot of countries that if you're born there 35 for it to be exact uh, where you live between 80 and 85 the average age most people are living into and past their 80s United States is in the 70s. And again, that leads to social factors. So many other questions why that is. Why do we have this distribution, right? And that's what statistics is. So go ahead and take a look at uh, this problem. Look at the answers as you start to see where they come from, right? You can count the total frequency. How many? At least 70. At least means 70 or more. So you can see you add, add those up between 65 and 80 and then the percentage right less than 80 so there's your 80 that would include all of these down here and then divided by the total you get a decimal and then you can con convert it to a percent